In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature 
sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. May the Lord who has begun this good work in us bring it to completion at the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord fills the world, Alleluia. The righteous shall be glad, they shall exult before God. They shall be jubilant with joy, Alleluia. Shall arise, his enemies shall be scattered, and those who hate him shall flee before him. Sing to God, sing praises to his name, exult before him. The Lord gives the word. Behold, he sends out his voice, his mighty voice. Awesome is God from his sanctuary. The God of Israel, he is the one who gives power and strength to his people. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord fills the world, Alleluia, the righteous shall be glad, they shall exult before God, they shall be jubilant with joy, Alleluia. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, 
Comfort and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Worthy is Christ, the Lamb who was slain, whose blood set us free to be people of God. Power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and blessing and glory are His. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Singing with all the people of God and join in the hymn of all creation. Blessing and honor and glory and might be to God and the Lamb forever. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God, for the Lamb who was slain has begun his reign. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, on this day you once taught the hearts of your faithful people by sending them the light of your Holy Spirit. Grant us in our day by the same Spirit to have a right understanding in all things and evermore to rejoice in his holy consolation. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading for the day of Pentecost is from Genesis chapter 11. Now the whole earth had one language and the same words. And as people migrated from the east, they found a plain on the land of Shinar and settled there. And they said to one another, Come, let us make bricks and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and bitumen for mortar. Then they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower with its top in the heavens. And let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be dispersed over the face of the whole earth. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower, which the children of man had built. And the Lord said, Behold, they are one people, and they have all one language. And this is only the beginning of what they will do. And nothing that they propose to do now will be impossible for them. Come, let us go down and there confuse their language, so that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord dispersed them from there over the face of all the earth, and they left off building the city. Therefore its name was called Babel because there the Lord confused the language of all the earth, and from there the Lord dispersed them over the face of all the earth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Hear my prayer, O Lord, give ear to my pleas for mercy. In your faithfulness answer me, in your righteousness. Enter not into judgment with your servant, for no one living is righteous before you. For the enemy has pursued my soul, he has crushed my life to the ground. He has made me sit in darkness like those long dead. Therefore my spirit faints within me. My heart within me is appalled. I remember the days of old. I meditate on all that you have done. I ponder the work of your hands. I stretch out my hands to you. My soul thirsts for you like a parched land. Answer me quickly, O oh Lord, my spirit fails. Hide not your face from me, lest I be like those who go down to the pit. Let me hear in the morning of your steadfast love, for in you I trust. Make me know the way I should go, for to you I lift up my soul. Deliver me from my enemies, O Lord. I have fled to you for refuge. Teach me to do your will, for you are my God. Let your good spirit lead me on level ground. For your name's sake, O oh Lord, preserve my life. In your righteousness bring my soul out of trouble. And in your steadfast love you will cut off my enemies, and you will destroy all the adversaries of my soul, for I am your servant. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The second reading is from Acts chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues as a fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And at this sound the multitude came together, and they were bewildered, because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and astonished, saying, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? How is it that we hear each of us in his own native language? Parthians and Medes and Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, 
Cretans and Arabians. We hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others, mocking, said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give ear to my words. For these men are not drunk, as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel. And in the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even on my male servants and female servants, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in the heavens above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the day of the Lord comes, the great and magnificent day. And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 14th chapter. Jesus answered him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words. And the word that you hear is not mine, but the Father's who sent me. These things I have spoken to you while I am still with you. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. You heard me say to you, I am going away, and I will come to you. If you loved me, you would have rejoiced, because I am going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you before it takes place, so that when it does take place, you may believe. I will no longer talk much with you, for the ruler of this world is coming. He has no claim on me, but I do as the Father has commanded me, so that the world may know that I love the Father. Rise, let us go from here. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Christ. Oh, 
In the name of Jesus, amen. Peace to you. These are the very first words that Jesus speaks to his disciples after he rises from the dead. Peace to you. As the Father has sent me, even I am sending you. He shows them his hands. The source of that peace that he is just giving them the crucifixion. And then he breathes on them and says, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone their sins, they are forgiven. If you withhold forgiveness, it is withheld. On the day that Jesus rises from the dead and speaks peace to his disciples, he fulfills the promise he had given them just days earlier which is our gospel reading today. These things I have spoken to you while I am still with you, Jesus says, but the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. You know, we live in troubling times, not just because of the coronavirus disease that has been on our minds for the past several months and has upended the world in ways that none of us really could have expected. There's also things more community nationally oriented violence and protests and animosity between the races. There are injustices and overreactions and underreactions and people who don't know how to react at all. They just know that something's not right. Something's not the way that it's supposed to be. And then there are things on a more personal level that threaten to steal our peace, our own anxieties, our own illnesses and battles. Perhaps there's a friend you're at odds with, family, 
that is currently breaking in two. You know, in the world, peace is when things are going well. It's when everyone's healthy, when there's no war or violence, when everything is just and right. In the world, we have peace when you can sit on your couch and watch your favorite TV show and enjoy a iced tea and refresh yourself. <laughs> that's peaceful, right? Or sitting out in the backyard, listening to the birds singing. That's peace. But Jesus says that he does not give to us the way that the world gives. The kind of peace that Jesus gives is not the peace that we find in the world. The peace of Jesus is a peace that can exist out on a battlefield even as bullets are whizzing past your head. The peace of Jesus comes amidst the anxieties and the injustices and all of the troubles of the world. The peace of Jesus is the peace that comes with the forgiveness of sins. That our war and animosity and enmity with God has been put to an end by the death of Jesus. <laughs> That's why he shows his disciples his hands just after he says, peace be with you. Because those scars are testimony that we have true peace with God. And because we have that peace with God through the forgiveness of sins, well, our anxieties are calmed. We are able to forgive those with whom we have enmity. We're able to look beyond the troubles and the sufferings of this world and the injustices that continue to perpetuate themselves and look ahead to a peaceful country. Jesus says that the peace that he promises comes with the gift of the Holy Spirit. The helper the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. You know, whenever we talk of the Holy Spirit, we must immediately also talk about Jesus because that's the Holy Spirit's job. The Holy Spirit is always and constantly reminding us of the words and promises of Jesus Christ. And so the Holy Spirit is the one who is at work here in the church, even today. Now, as the Father has sent Jesus, Jesus then also sends his disciples with the Holy Spirit to proclaim this good news of forgiveness and reconciliation throughout the whole world. To gather together people from across the world. You know, on the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit comes, people are gathered from all across the, the Mediterranean world. You heard the whole list of people from Egypt and Greece and other parts of the, the Near East. You know, the festival of Pentecost was the third great pilgrim festival of the Jewish people, in addition to Passover and the festival of booths. It was an in-gathering, a harvest festival. That's why all of those people were there on the day of Pentecost. And so when Jesus sends his Holy Spirit and fulfills that promise by giving the Spirit to his disciples and his followers, he undoes the, the curse that God had put upon the world at Babel. When he when he confused their languages and dispersed the peoples across the world. Now, by the power of the Holy Spirit, he unites all people again in a common language, the language of the gospel, the language of forgiveness, the language of reconciliation. So that's the help that the Holy Spirit gives. So that word helper there can mean a number of things, comforter, advocate, guide, counselor. The Holy Spirit does all of those things and he does so by bringing us the words of Jesus here in his holy word 
there in the font as we are washed in the water and the Spirit, renewed in the Spirit to live a new life, there upon the altar as the Holy Spirit brings us once again those words of Jesus inviting us to dine with him. The Holy Spirit is the one who brings us to Jesus. And he dispels all troubles, all anxieties, and all worries, and he brings in its place true peace. The peace that the wounds on Jesus' hands testify to. The peace that comes with the forgiveness of sins. The peace that we now have with God for the sake of of Jesus Christ. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit. Let's try that again. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men, and for our salvation, came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory, to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. For all baptized believers, that they would be given ears to hear and an eagerness to learn all that the Holy Spirit teaches them about their Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and the salvation they have through him, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For spiritual renewal in our congregation, district, synod, and the whole church on earth, that by God's grace and the power of the Holy Spirit, we would long to keep Christ's word, dwell in his peace, sing God's praises, and love our neighbors. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who serve in Christ's church, that all pastors may faithfully preach law and gospel, all missionaries be fruitful in their labors, and all church workers be faithful in their service, so that all who call on the name of the Lord may be saved. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For peace among the nations, for those who rule over us, for those who protect and defend us, and for liberty, that the peoples of our world would be blessed to live in health, peace, and quietness, unhindered by threats of violence, oppression, or fear, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for an end to the pandemic, for those afflicted in body or spirit, 
and especially for those who have requested our prayers. That their hearts would neither be troubled nor afraid, for nothing can separate them from the love God has for them in Christ, who has overcome the ruler of this world and secured for them eternal peace in his kingdom, which has no end. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who return to the holy altar, that they would come in faithful reverence and awe, recognizing how awesome God is from his sanctuary in giving them the very body and blood of their Savior to eat and to drink for the forgiveness of their sins and the strengthening of their faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who have gone before us and now rest from their labors, let us give thanks to the Lord that we would follow them as they followed Christ and be found faithful by those who come after us. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, all glory, honor, and worship is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit, both now and forevermore. Amen. This week, we will begin to offer small services of Holy Communion as the first step in reopening for public worship. Services of ten or fewer will be able to receive the sacrament of our Lord's body and blood by announcing their attendance via our online form at www.stjohnschicago.org slash communion or by calling the church office. Since many of us have not received the sacrament for an extended time, this morning we will prepare ourselves with the Christian questions and answers from Luther's small catechism. After confession and instruction in the Ten Commandments, the Creed and the Lord's Prayer, and the sacraments of baptism and the Lord's Supper, the pastor may ask or Christians may ask themselves these questions. Do you believe that you are a sinner? Yes, I believe it. 
I am a sinner. How do you know this? From the Ten Commandments, which I have not kept. Are you sorry for your sins? Yes, I am sorry that I have sinned against God. What have you deserved from God because of your sins? His wrath and displeasure, temporal death, and eternal damnation. See Romans 6, verses 21 and 23. Do you hope to be saved? Yes, that is my hope. In whom then do you trust? In my dear Lord Jesus Christ. Who is Christ? The Son of God, true God and man. How many gods are there? Only one, but there are three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. What has Christ done for you that you trust in him? He died for me and shed his blood for me on the cross for the forgiveness of sins. Did the Father also die for you? He did not. The Father is God only, as is the Holy Spirit, but the Son is both true God and true man. He died for me and shed his blood for me. How do you know this? From the Holy Gospel, from the words instituting the sacrament, and by his body and blood given me as a pledge in the sacrament. What are the words of institution? Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Do you believe, then, that the true body and blood of Christ are in the sacrament? Yes, I believe it. What convinces you to believe this? The word of Christ, take, eat, this is my body, drink of it, all of you, this is my blood. What should we do when we eat his body and drink his blood and in this way receive his pledge? We should remember and proclaim his death and the shedding of his blood as he taught us. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Why should we remember and proclaim his death? First, so we may learn to believe that no creature could make satisfaction for our sins. Only Christ, true God and man, could do that. Second, so we may learn to be horrified by our sins and to regard them as very serious. Third, so we may find joy and comfort in Christ alone and through faith in him be saved. What motivated Christ to die and make full payment for your sins? His great love for the Father, and for me, and other sinners. As it is written in John 14, Romans 5, Galatians 2, and Ephesians 5. Finally, why do you wish to go to the sacrament? that I may learn to believe that Christ, out of great love, died for my sin and also learn from him to love God and my neighbor. What should admonish and encourage a Christian to receive the sacrament frequently? First, both the command and the promise of Christ the Lord. Second, his own pressing need because of which the command, encouragement, and promise are given. But what should you do if you are not aware of this need and have no hunger and thirst for the sacrament? To such a person, no better advice can be given than this. First, he should touch his body to see if he still has flesh and blood. Then he should believe what the scriptures say of it in Galatians 5 and Romans 7. Second, he should look around to see whether he is still in the world 
and remember that there will be no lack of sin and trouble. As the scriptures say in John 15 and 16, and in 1 John 2 and 5. Third, he will certainly have the devil also around him, who with his lying and murdering day and night will let him have no peace, within or without. As the scriptures picture him in John 8 and 16, 1 Peter 5, Ephesians 6, and 2 Timothy 2. Note, these questions and answers are no child's play but are drawn up with great earnestness of purpose by the venerable and devout Dr. Luther for both young and old. Let each one pay attention and consider it a serious matter. For St. Paul writes to the Galatians in chapter 6, Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, grant to your church your Holy Spirit and the wisdom that comes down from above, that your word may not be bound, but have free course and be preached to the joy and edifying of Christ's holy people, so that in steadfast faith we may serve you and in the confession of your name abide unto the end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Life revealing that we might know more.